Hey everyone, this is Haley from Cartoon Universe. This is going to be my first Ruby video after Volume 7 started, and this is actually going to be a video released while the season is still airing. We are at the tail end of a two week break, so I jumped on the opportunity to discuss the show when I have enough time to make a video before an episode comes out. And for those of you who are wondering about my thoughts on the new volume as a whole, I'm really enjoying it. I love the new characters, and glad Penny's back, and I'm super happy that we not only got to meet Willow officially, but also got some hints at some stark backstory. It's been a good time, and I'm really excited to see where the rest of the volume takes us. Lots of crying, apparently. But today I want to discuss a character I've only briefly mentioned prior in a video, and that is the insane scorpion faunus, Tyrion Kalos. He didn't interest me too much at first, despite the fact that he is a freaking scorpion faunus that is an amazing fighter, so I'm not the biggest fan of characters that are this crazy seemingly without reason. Not to mention his unwavering devotion to Salem and slightly grotesque mannerisms. But then, I got to thinking about his backstory, and that got me a lot more interested in him. And with the release of the World of Ruby book, and a lot more scenes with him in Volume 7, there is now quite a bit to talk about. So in today's video, let's talk more about Tyrion's past, his semblance, and his ultimate fate. If you enjoyed the video and want to stick around to see me make more Ruby content, make sure to subscribe. So to begin, let's talk about his semblance, since, as I have mentioned before, a semblance can sometimes tell you more about a person's past. Initially, people were uncertain if his ability to poison people with his finger was his semblance, but the World of Ruby book clarified that this is more of a special ability of his since he is a scorpion faunus. Then my friends came up with the idea that perhaps his semblance had something to do with metal or weapon detection. In his fight with Crow, we see how he almost effortlessly dodges past all the swings and shots made with Harbinger. Not only that, but he's able to deflect all of Ruby's bullets with his tail while he wasn't even looking in her direction. It was only when Crow decided to use his hands and actually punch Tyrion that he was able to get a few real hits in. It doesn't seem to be exactly that however, but there still could be a reason as for why this happened other than Tyrion not anticipating that attack. I'll get into that later, but for now let's talk about what we saw of his semblance. For those of you that didn't catch it, it looks like in episode 6 of volume 7 we finally got an answer to his semblance. In the episode, he goes on a little murder spree in an attempt to frame Penny, killing many thirsty moms and others in the process. In order to get Penny in the right position, to make it look like she was attacking Robin, he wanted to get Fiona out of the way. He creeps up on her and his eyes and right hand start to glow purple. With his right hand he slashes her, making her aura melt away from the spot of contact. Then with his other arm, he cuts her with his weapon, and with no aura to shield her, she takes the hit and gets a huge wound on her stomach. Not that there was really any doubting that this was his semblance, Forrest's voice actor confirmed it anyways. We have new outfits, new hair, new semblances. But what are the specifics of it exactly? Well, from the looks of it, upon contact he can make the aura on an entire person's body retract, allowing it to be damaged from any small hit. I love Phoenix Knight's possibility for it, as he said it was like aura poisoning, which would actually make perfect sense for a scorpion bonus. Even looks like he is channeling his aura into his hand, making himself vulnerable for attacks himself. An eye for an eye, if you will. <laughs> eye for an eye. <laughs> but even if that's not exactly the case, this is still an extremely powerful semblance. Without auras, people can easily get hurt or even die from cold weather when the heating goes away. Oh. Now of course I cannot forget the connection this gives into Jean Arc, who I mean of course I love to talk about as much as possible, but I want to save that for last. So before that, I have some thoughts on Tyrion's backstory. In the episode of Worst Case Scenario, we learn a bit about where he was before he was with Salem. We learn that he has been apprehended in the past for murder, assault, and kidnapping, and was only caught with the cooperation of both officers and a huntsman by the name of F. Pickerel. While being transported on an airship from Mistral to Atlas, a swarm of Grimm attacked and killed everyone on board, except for Tyrion, who was considered missing ever since. From the way he calls the Grimm beautiful, I think we can presume that it was Salem that sent these Grimm for him, and this was the first time that they had ever actually been in contact. Perhaps she saw the chaos he was causing on his own through her seer Grimm, and thought he would be a good asset. She saved him from what would be a horrible life in prison, or whatever Atlas had in store for Dangerous Faunus. I should also note that Tyrion's illusion is the parable of the scorpion and the frog, which has its moral being that some people are irredeemable. So Tyrion is clearly the scorpion, and it looks like we finally got our frog with Picarel, which is a type of frog. In the story, the scorpion kills the frog even after the frog allows it to ride on its back across the river, which parallels the show since it was likely Tyrion that ended up killing Picarel. If his semblance does in fact leave him vulnerable when he attacks, this also goes along well with his illusion, since in the tale both the scorpion and the frog drown once the frog dies. Sure, 
It's good to finally get some backstory on him, but this does not quite satisfy me. Who was he before he was a serial killer? Surely there is more to his story than this. And I've come up with something. This might sound a bit messed up, but that's usually how my backstory headcanons are. And as for Tyrion, I'm sure the crazier the better. So anyways, this backstory came to me while listening to Tyrion's leitmotif video. This basically highlights all the musical moments in the Ruby soundtrack that are associated with a character. Starting around the 1 minute and 30 second mark, I began to get very circusy vibes. I don't know much about instruments or anything like that, but from the fast tempo to the organ whistles we hear, it definitely sounds familiar. Not to mention how much of his leitmotif sounds like a music box, where calmer moments wind up to become louder and faster. It really has its circus feeling, but creepier and chilling, at least to me. Everything in Ruby is very intentional when it comes to music, so I formed some ideas around this. What if Tyrion was more or less born into life in the circus, where he was constantly put on display and forced to perform tricks? This would explain his acrobatic abilities, but the Faunus trainer that worked at the circus was cruel and clearly treated the Faunus he held captive horribly. The scars Tyrion has could be from being whipped for years, which is commonly seen with animals in the stereotypical scenes of a circus performance. Life in captivity and being treated like an animal in this manner would drive anyone insane. We even have evidence that Faunus had long been treated terribly to the point where they were put in cages for all to view. Anyways, perhaps Tyrion heard rumors of someone that could control Grimm and wanted the most powerful people as her henchmen, and he wanted to get her attention. Something must have happened where the remaster slipped up or Tyrion just straight up destroyed the circus and escaped. But eventually, this led him to become a serial killer, not only seeking revenge on humanity which has severely wronged him for no reason other than being seen as a freak, but also to get the attention of his goddess. His semblance makes it super easy to kill people, making it perfect for him. Eventually, all this killing does attract the attention he was seeking, and now he is truly a force to be reckoned with. But we do know that Tyrion does not seem to have a grudge with humans in particular, but just living beings as a whole. So perhaps he was simply an outcast from wherever he was born. There is this theory that he was born in Vacuo, which is a very unforgiving land, especially when one has no tribe to call their own. Perhaps that was the case with Tyrion, and it drove him insane. This is all of course just my speculation, and we may never get more insight into his backstory. If you have a different Tyrion origin story in mind, tell me in the comments section. Now finally, let's talk about where the show may be going with Tyrion. Now it's pretty clear that he has a huge role to play in this season. He's doing a lot of the heavy lifting in all of Watts' schemes, and has one of the highest kill counts on the show so far. With all this focus on him, it makes sense that there will be another Tyrion battle coming up this volume. And what do you know, one of the things we have yet to see in the Volume 7 intro is the Tyrion vs. Crow and Robin fight. This is definitely a battle that makes sense, because Crow vs. Tyrion is a fan favorite fight. Looks like Tyrion might have to finish what he started last time. <laughs> But I don't see it being the end for Tyrion just yet. There's one thing I'm begging for the show to resolve. Mostly since I love Jon, and I'm still wondering what the heck Tyrion meant by this line. Well, you do interest me. <laughs> Tell me your secrets, Scorpion Man. Now initially, I figured he was interested in Noodle Boy because he was pretty clearly an arc. The emblem being on his shield makes it a dev giveaway. But Tyrion checks him out a bit more just to be sure. The arc family has a very long and important history, which we don't know too much about, but I speculated on it a lot in my first Ruby Theory video. But with the reveal of his semblance, there's another possibility which has come about. Perhaps he was interested in Jean, not only due to the amount of aura he possesses, but also due to his semblance aura amp. This semblance is very useful, as it allows him to give his own aura to heal others' injuries. But he can also strengthen his own defensive aura, and even in some ways heal himself very quickly after a hit. So it's pretty clear that Tyrion and Jean have very contrasting semblances, to the point where one can almost negate the other. I can see it being possible that Tyrion knew Jean had a ton of aura and fancied him to be someone interesting to battle. The ability to detect auras is something we have seen before. For example, Fox is able to do it, as showcased in the novel After the Fall. I talked more about his abilities in a previous video, which you should also check out. This actually brings me back to what I was talking about before with Crow being only able to hit Tyrion when he uses fists. Huntsmen are able to channel aura into any type of weapon or object and if Tyrion is able to sense aura to such a high degree, perhaps this gives him a huge advantage over anyone using a weapon. Then again, wouldn't Crow's fists also have an aura? I don't really know, but for all we know, Tyrion being so good at dodging weapons isn't just part of his senses that he naturally has as a scorpion faunus. So this is just another piece of evidence that these two are destined to once again clash, even if it's not in Volume 7. 
We also have many people pointing out the colors of the auras, which resemble the gods of light and darkness. Which is crazy, but all I can really say is that I'm worried for my boy. But being able to fight Tyrion, either with the rest of his team or by himself, would really show how much Jon has grown as a character. Tyrion and Jon are such opposites, although in a very different way than Jon and Cinder are. And being able to fight such an important villain and not getting horribly defeated would show just how much he has actually improved. And now that Jon has officially unlocked his semblance, if someone gets hurt by Tyrion's poison, Jon can easily step in and heal them. Jon has always been one to be willing to sacrifice himself to save others, and perhaps Tyrion would want to put his abilities to the test to see how many people he can actually save when he is needed. Kind of like what Cinder did to Weiss, but on a much larger scale. Or you know, the whole eye for eye thing, and the Juniper death theory could become another 25% true. Finally, revealing Tyrion's semblance is actually getting me a lot more excited about what the writers have in store for Jon. Combining all of his training with the possibility of him learning how to extend his aura, and even his more upgraded weapon, and he's turning out to be someone Pyrrha would be extremely proud of, more so than she already was. Volume 7 hasn't exactly been a big season for Jon so far, except for the haircut, and the moms that were after him because of that, but I'm still loving the little ways that he is growing. So I managed to turn this into a Jon video, which honestly isn't that surprising knowing me, but as I said before, I'm a lot more interested in Tyrion now. With all that said, what do you think the writers have in store for him? Not like there was any question about it, but he is a character that is very much incapable of redemption. Who do you think will be the one to take him down? Will Volume 7 see the end of Tyrion, or will he be causing chaos for a lot longer? Let me know. If this is your first time watching a video of mine and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. I might try and get another Ruby Theory video out before the volume ends, but I'm not sure if that will be totally possible. And if you want to help support the channel, we have Patreon. Any support really helps and is greatly appreciated. We also have a new host on the channel, PostStorm, who is making Ruby videos. His first video, which is about Oscar's semblance, may be out before or after this video gets uploaded. At the time of this recording, I'm not 100% sure. But thank you all for watching and have an animated day.